So you gotta look at what time. Hello there, very special good evening to you and welcome to Mr. Chairman. I'm David Samuels. Very nice of you to have you um, attend one of our weekly meetings. You know, we first had him on some 10 months ago and what a sensation he was. Well, we've brought him back only because you've requested it. So on this week's Mr. Chairman, we speak with the charismatic and tell it as it is Felix de Tourville, also known as Champagne, employed as a red cap at the Huanara International Airport. We discuss the proposed Huanara International Development, the controversial, you could say, DSH project, Tourism Development Plans for the South and elsewhere. What is the public talking about in the South? That's VA4 and Miku and Labri. A close look at the UWP's and PM Chastney's performances. The Castries Constituencies Council. Speculation about the emergence of a third political party. And he highlights some issues with a cable provider. All that and more, plus your calls, of course, on Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Welcome to our meeting once again. From Groselay in the north to VA4 in the south, those of you on the eastern coastline, right through to the western coastline, thank you very much for attending our meeting. Hey, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Nice Chairman. to have you. Glad to be back. Really nice, really back. nice to have you. Thank you. You know, I just have to say, um, what a... An impression you mm -hmm. made uh, the last time you were here it was February that and um, yes and one of the things which I'm getting used to it now mm -hmm. the number of people amazingly who would stop me during the week sometimes shopping or, or walking around somewhere right. always want to engage me in some discourse mm -hmm. oh i i saw sam flood i saw yeah. champagne mm -hmm. i like this yeah. i like that i wasn't so sure about this or that and it it really amazed me and something else that has amazed me as well um sometimes i would be at a shop and i would just say a few words right. you know like um what's the price of this so um hello mm -hmm. good afternoon um uh, and you know, you'd have the, the person look at you, the, the lady, the usually the lady. Yeah. I, the I, I, I know that voice. That's are right. you, That's are right. you? Sometimes they off target That's in right. terms of the name, but usually they are right on target. So it's really amazing. And, and um, I just want to thank you once again for, yeah, for, for being here. Um, what's the situation down at, at um, Hugh and Aura? Um, I, I mean, since we last spoke, um, yeah. I know that um, what's the situation with incoming flights and and the general condition of the um, Hiwanara International Airport. Well, the, the the conditions of the airport itself has not changed. I mean, it's just the same old terminal building. That Does it embarrass there. you? Oh, especially when it rains. We had, you know, it's been raining for the last two weeks. So when it rains, it actually the place. It does not matter how much, and I'm, I'll be honest with you, this last poor personnel they're trying so hard to try to fix these patches. They put a little patch on the roof, you know, they're still tight and stuff, something like that, but it doesn't work. It, it, it's overwhelmed with the rain. It, and, and it's so embarrassing to see all that water coming into the terminal. You have to, the, 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 the personnel have to put some buckets here, buckets here, buckets joking. here. It have, buckets? been happening for years. That's been happening for years, but they, I've never but, seen that, oh you know, God. I've never There's, seen that anywhere. There was one point in time I counted, I literally counted at least 17 buckets. 17, 17 buckets? 17 buckets. And I'm talking about, you're not talking about little drips, little drips. You're talking about pouring like a waterfall. So I want to ask you. Seriously. As a St. Lucian, first, very what, what are the tourists saying? What are the visitors saying? What are St. Lucians saying when they see this? You know, 
the locals when they come in, they say, so pourquoi vous avez pas de salade du jour? Serious. You heard all the time from the locals. The visitors don't see anything, but you could sense something. You could see it on the, the, the expression, because some of them get wet because they have to rock, run from that aircraft and come in. And when they, go, when they get in there, they would say, oh boy, my troubles are over, but there's more water coming from the roof. Inside the terminal. You know what I mean? I'm not saying they're going to walk through it because they're the buckets all there. And then there's this, um, you know, the, those yellow tape that they put around this bucket. Sometimes they put a cone right. to, to so identify the drip. So, it's, it's as bad it is as so, it is. listen to me, it is so, so sad to see So that. why hasn't the um, ANC Ports Authority made a statement, I mean, from time to time? I know it's an embarrassing Very issue, embarrassing. But, but you confront it by making a statement mm -hmm. dealing with it. You see, making a statement just and, brings it. And it, it, it at least my it exposes it a little more. Yeah. Because if you make a statement and the other two weeks somebody comes in, a local for that matter that heard the statement you made and then nothing was done. So it goes back, it's better you don't say anything. Because this, uh, this week for that matter, this week, last week, buckets are scattered all over the place. It is so embarrassing for you as a worker, as, a, as an airport personnel. It's very embarrassing. And like I said, the expression on the faces of the passengers, the visitors coming in, you could tell that they're really disappointed in seeing that. Seriously, I'm so happy that we will, I should say will, because the Prime Minister has indicated that there's going to be a construction of a new terminal. So let's hope that really comes in soon to take all this embarrassment from the personnel at the airport and St. Lucia by extension, because it's terrible. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. I, I mean, I I'm very happy that I I have not witnessed this because I I'm trying to figure out how I would react when I it 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 cannot be a very um nice. Very ridiculous. There was one time at the customs, the baggage area, the customs supervisor at the time. I think that was earlier this year, sometime last year. It was raining and the water came down so hard. You would have sworn it was a waterfall. It like not just a stream. A huge amount of water, the, and customs officer, the, the supervisor wanted to shut down the place just because. And I think they brought in some airport personnel, and I think they went to the roof and tried to fix that. It was bad. How long has this thing been going? Oh, I'm down there. 2007. So it's been a perennial problem. Oh, it's been going on for years. Oh yeah, I, mean, I, I went down there from VG in 2007. It's now 10 years. I, I met that stuff. Down you there. met it I there. Met it there in, in 2007, you met it. I met that problem. I met it and it, it, it has it's gotten, gotten worse. worse. It's gotten worse. Do you get a sense that they, 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 they know what's wrong or, or, or what? Or I they're not know. very sure? I, don't, I, I think they know what the problem is. The problem is on the roof. But I do not know if it has to do with the construction and the design of the way the roof is. Because you, if, you, if you realize the way you know the roofing is, it has some arches. I don't know if you paid close attention to it. It has some kind of V arches in the design of the roof. I do not know if that, what, if that is what the problem is. That is what the problem is because it has that V kind of arch stuff, a whole lot of them, maybe about 20. Mm. So I don't know if it, during that time when it was constructed, if that could be the problem. I do not know, but I'm, I'm thinking that I'm may have something I'm just amazed by it. something you said a few moments ago that there was a particular day you counted 17. 17. I had buckets. it on my phone. I, I, 17 I, buckets. If I did not lose <laughs> that phone, and I, I would have showed it to you. 17, and they were all in the, the departure area. In the arrival area, all over the place, 17. I literally videoed that. Took it on my own. And this has been going on now for 10 years. More than 10 years. I came down and I went down there in 2007. It's 10 years now. I'm down. That there. is unbelievable. It's really unbelievable. I don't know what. <laughs> trust me. It beats me. I could never understand what's the problem. Okay, but even if there is going to be, well, we've heard talk of a, a new terminal building. Mm -hmm. um, I rather suspect, I don't know, they'll condemn this one and, and build another. Mm -hmm. But that's going to take time. You know, usually construction yeah. of a... That, this is a massive development. Big, big, that big that project. will probably take a couple Maybe of three, years. Four years, that's a big project. You know, and um, it's... So, we just have to live with this for a while yet. You know, the funny thing about that is you really... There's no way I would point the finger at Slasper and blame Slasper for anything. Maybe you could say, well, they should do a little more to, you know, try to prevent that um, all that water coming into the terminal. Mm -hmm. But this building is what 1993. That would take us to what about 20 something years, mm -hmm. 24 years. That's a long time ago. That is a long time ago for that building. It kind of makes for you wonder world. whether the maintenance on it was 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 good. Yeah. You know, because when you have a 
an investment like this, you really need to maintain it. It has to be maintained. And, um, and, I, and, and I think um, a lot of people would agree that seems to be our, our weak point, maintenance. If you look all around the infrastructure mm -hmm. in this country, Bridges. government buildings, fire services, right. police stations, right. for Bridges. some reason, Bridges. bridges we growth. just um, build those things and just forget about, and forget yes, about right. them, yes, right. which, is, which is stupid. That's yes, right. And now, you know, because we're on that subject, I don't know if I could just diverge a little bit into something that I've been noticing that is totally ridiculous. It has to do with the grass cutting around the island, and I've been saying that all the time. A quarter of a million or maybe a half a million dollars is put aside to cut grass or to do the cleanup campaign every three months but then someone it has just been done last week okay you know how fast grass grows someone comes from overseas maybe the next two weeks after that he said but you guys don't clean the place but the place was just cleaned a week ago so i've been saying the maintenance of grass cutting is what has to be done in st lucia so you get a couple of guys from every constituency and this is what is going to help to you create at least 170 people get a new job. You get 10 guys from each constituency, 17 constituencies, that's 170 new people. And every week or every two weeks, these guys are responsible to maintain the level of that grass, to keep it low, keep it clean, and keep it nice. I am certainly sure at the end of the day, the government would pay less money by every three months or every two months, giving this huge amount of money for a stimulus package, and two weeks later, the grass is back to the same level. Yeah, especially if it's raining, it's raining a sense. lot. It's raining a lot these days. It is something that has concerned me coming from the Mon <sighs> into Castries. Sometimes I'm embarrassed oh. because there's, there's, there's a lot of bush, and they without and, the, and I and, mean sometimes you know you. Even as you drive by um, the bush, you know, depending, you're very close to the yep. to the curve, and 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 you, it 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 creates a problem with your visibility sometimes. A lady just you know, went up the road. She just got out her car totally written off in um, the top of town. There's this pole, this this wall. I think it's on the edge of a drain, and she was driving. She said, and she, the, the grass was so high was higher than the, the, that wall. She never saw it. Mm -hmm. She thought it was some grass and she just slid, slid off the road and total right off, right? And because of the grass, she could not see the wall. That's sad. But That's here's sad. the amazing thing. Do you know that the morn and everywhere you're talking about was just done a month ago? It was just done a month ago. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. So what is the plan? You, you, you say every three months? But, every but three how months. could that be? Grass is something you, you have to. You see, we, we go back to maintenance that again. Is my, that is what I'm trying you to bring cannot, across. You cannot just, you know, do that once every three months. It doesn't make sense. Even every once every three months, once tw tw twice, a, you know, every two months, it doesn't you, work you that way. To, but if you have, you have to man maintain. You it. must maintain it, and yeah. the place would be kept. The place would be well beautiful. It would nice every time because you have people that would go around the very constituencies and keep that grass level to a low. No point. But, but, it, but it, it is work. costly, eh? It is very, it is, but it I'll is tell costly. you what, I have not done the yeah. actual math on it mm -hmm. to figure out which one would be less costly between the two, between the stimulus package every three months. And But I could tell you, in my constituency, Cassius, I could get 10 guys, negotiate with these 10 guys, and have them to maintain these areas for much less than what the government is. I'll tell you why. I know that I'm trying to take monies out of anybody's pocket. If you have guys that are doing nothing for the day, they, but they're only weed eaters, they're not doing anything. They're waiting for the three months to get it something to do. But you go to this guy, you say, hey, listen, I have a proposal. Every week, every Friday, I would like you to do this here. You go to this bocas, you and Chupu, you back at them, and I'm giving you this. What do you think these guys would say to you? Listen, these are the guys that were doing nothing. If you offer these guys 200 bucks a week, you don't believe they would grab it? And, um, they, they would grab it. Because they were doing nothing in the state to mm -hmm. begin with. Mm -hmm. You have to maintain the place. These things have to be maintained. You cannot have grass cutting every two, three months. It doesn't work. So do you think your government understands that? <sighs> I have brought that up to the city council. Mm. And, and, and I think the problem is money. I think that's what the problem is. But you have to keep the country clean. Yeah, you have to. You need to keep the country clean. Yes, I, I, am, I am concerned. I, I have noticed. I mean, it got a little better for a while. 
but um, coming down the Mon, yeah. from the Mon to Castries along the way, mm -hmm. it, there's a great deal of. Uh, oh yeah, it's yeah, terrible. It, it needs to be improved. And I drive down to the Beaufort, and I go around sometimes. I, listen, I've been around this country so many times mm -hmm. because I've been driving for a little while, and um, they're trying to keep it clean, but you know this is grass. As long as the rain comes the next two days... But one, has to, one has to be fair. I have to tell you, um, the St. Lucia Labour Party, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the methodology was, mm -hmm, that we got. but I found that there was a great... The areas were, were better kept, in my view. I, mm -hmm. I found that everywhere you went... Yeah, there were a lot of people um, I found in some areas. Um, sometimes you got a sense there were too many people yeah, working in too of much people. of a small area. Yeah, sure. But when you traveled from Castries to Vieux um along the way, because there are some very lovely areas, That's you know, uh, approaching nice. Denry, for very example. Clean. Love, oh, clean. There was this sense and appreciation for keeping the grass low, and for trimming the trees, there was that. It was very obvious to me. And um, I, I would hope, if nothing else, that the, um, this government, mm -hmm. the United Workers' Party, would have learned a thing or two. I don't know how it was done, yeah. quite, quite frankly, but in my view, they did a, a better job um, of maintaining um, the grounds and the areas um, around the cast trees yeah. and right through to, to VA4. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not so sure um, about the western coast, right. but, but, but certainly I, I felt that the former government did a better job. Yeah, I'm not going to be biased because I, I, you know, I travel these roads almost every day. And I will tell you, it was a, in that regard, it was a be little better kept. Yeah. It was a little better kept. I don't know what they did, who did what, but it was a little better yeah. kept. Not that it was that our guys are not trying to... Our guys need to get stuff together and try to maintain yeah. that same level. But they were doing so we a get, job We get back to that point, yeah. maintenance. That, mm -hmm. that's, that's the issue, mm -hmm. and, and, and some attention needs to be paid to that. So um, anything else on the Hiwanawa International Airport? Well... Is there anything else you want to say about that? You said this airport... Have there been meetings about that yet? No, nothing? Well, I, I would not know about meetings okay. in that regard because, you know, they would have their own, the staff would have, the, that, that's not a discussion they would have with our company, our, our association. But I would like to really commend our guys, the group of guys that we have working at Skycaps and Beaufort because a lot of people who are not directly linked with the tourism industry, people such as police officers and nurses, but indirectly you are. Because everybody, our main economy is tourism. So you meet a, a police officer, they might tell you, well, nah, I really did pass the tourism. This is a very bad statement. <laughs> Seriously, because you are. And our guys, we make it our duty to make these people feel welcome, both in and out. When these passengers are leaving, my servant of most of the other guys go, how was your vacation, sir? They will tell you, we had a nice time. You have a beautiful island. And one of the, our chorus, would, we would like to see you next year. Some of the guys say, come back next week. And then the people make a big laugh about that. This is something. We have met, I have met people that said, I remember you from last year. You told me to come back. So we are serving as ambassadors. No matter how some people may look at the job and look at it as guys that are just carrying bags. It, is, it goes way beyond that. People, st people still of do that? Of course, people do that all the time. They look at you as just, as just guys carrying luggage. Mm. Carrying luggage for money, carrying luggage for tips. Mm. But they, don't, they, they, they never look at the flip side of that. And the flip side is, when these passengers come in, they, after they get to customs, and they say, welcome to St. Lucia, sir, and they feel that welcome. Mm. You make them feel special. How many of you? Are They're 15. Uh, 15. 15, yeah. We 15 and guys. most of the guys are from the south? Uh, they, there's myself, another gentleman by the name of Stanley, but now I think he resides down there for whatever reason. Mm. So uh, most of the guys are from down there. Like are they from, viewing us tonight? Of course. You sure? Of course, I know some of them. Are. <laughs> I know some of them are. As a matter of fact, let me give a shout out to our president because he had a surgery done today. I think he took off his cyst and he, I think the doctor sent him home for a little, maybe a couple of days. 
but, but, but he's one of the most remarkable guys you could ever meet. Fifteen of you. Yeah, fifteen. Wow, that's a, that's remarkable. That's a lot of guys. Yeah. Is it a very difficult job? In the off season, it is. <laughs> because you're not making you enough money. Make in the <laughs> but in the but, but when you make, when, you make. Oh yeah, when the season is on, like it's about to get started, yeah. like from November up until April of next year, you make some money. You make some money, but you have to be on your feet. And people and me now getting older, and then you know how that I had that accident and stuff. It's getting a little slow for me. But then listen to me. I will not trade this job. And no matter what people might want to think about it, I will not trade this job for no other job here in this country. Not one. I've said that a hundred times. I will not trade it. You get to meet interesting people. You meet. You, I mean, it has its little problems. We have little problems. As a matter of fact, we go, we're undergoing a little situation at the baggage hall, and that situation has been going on for decades. And the authorities. I'm so happy that I could take this opportunity to say that tonight. We are the the, the, the operators of the baggage at the baggage hall. We pay to operate. And I would like the local public, the local traveling public, to understand that we do not get a salary from anybody. Not from the government, not from the airline, not from anyone. We, in return, have to pay SLASPA to operate. So we are an entity. We are an association at the Buford Airport. Every man has to pay to operate at the airport. So our president writes a check to SLASPA. But then we have some hindrances because it's about money. So the guys working with CDSL, at the, 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 the ones that take the bags in. We are constantly in a battle with these guys every day. So what happens, the passengers, they're the first guys they meet. So the passengers, you know, they go around asking the passengers for help. Then the passengers pay most of them out there. When the passengers get to us now, they say, but we just pay somebody down there. So most of the times we have to lose that because somebody got paid down there. We have so, brought that so up. those people are inside they are inside next to the car and we the are the outside of customs at, in, in the back of customs so so we why have don't so why don't they why don't why isn't this regulated we listen well, to me, brother yeah. we have brought that up to slash person's attention over two million times we have had meetings we have had meetings with the personnel they they they, they so the guys who carry um the bags once it's at the carousel and, yeah, they, and that's they, the guys and they that take the bag in from the aircraft. Are they also called um, No, they're caps? not sky caps. They work for sleep for the comfort look at the um, airline company. I see. And that has nothing to do with their jobs. I but see. we have been, listen to me, every day for decades, and we could never understand why is it that the local authority, meaning Slasper and the other people, could never come to understand to ask these guys, this, this, this is not your job. Wow. That's, this, uh, this is, 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 I, I'm, I'm so happy that I, I, I know some people might want to get upset with me tomorrow, but I, I'm taking this opportunity to say that. Yeah. And, and we I, are in I'm the process. We, we, right now, we are in the process to get our lawyers to write to these entities to have them to have these guys. Stop. I'm glad you mentioned it, you yeah. know, and, um, and that, that is, it's, it's, that's amazing. It's very unfair. That's amazing. DSH. Oh, boy. There was so much hype yeah. um, not too long ago. And, and yeah. even the, con the the controversy, yep. all the, um, uh, um, the talk, various the groups yeah. and demonstrations and mm -hmm. hype, 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 hype. All of a sudden, everything has cooled down. Well, what <coughs> what are you hearing? Well, the SLB for for for, for starters is claiming victory. The, they're claiming, they're victory. claiming victory because as in as, as in, in that they have gotten the DHS to to either be delayed or or, or stop because. The initials, when, when this thing first came about, Mr. T.R. King said that we, was, we were going to have a horse race in December. You remember that statement yes. was made, right? Yes. So that has not happened, and that will not happen this year. Yes. So from what I'm hearing from some SLP operators, they're saying they're claiming victory that the chase has been stopped. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> so, that, so, so, but, but listen to me. If DHS, if DSH is, 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 comes to a stop... The Prime Minister had said know. something about some environmental issue that... Yeah, that I saw that press conference, so long it took eight to, months. Yeah, which, which, which surprised everybody. Well, how is that possible? Yes, it's just one of those... How points. is a government... Some EIA report. A government department is supposed to submit something to the Prime Minister, which I do not believe was supposed to take two months. It's taking eight. Well... What you do? I'm asking you a question. That's, what do you think about that? That's intriguing. Very intriguing. <laughs> very intriguing. That's very intriguing. Very worrisome. Very, very It doesn't concerned. surprise me. Well. It's, it doesn't surprise me. It's, it's just one of the things. 
I've heard that the new administration has been facing from time to time. Yeah. There seems to be uh, quite a lot of blockages here yep, yep. and there and yep. everywhere. And to be quite honest, sometimes I'm a bit surprised that they are surprised yep, about yeah. about those mm -hmm. those blockages and so on. But and you get a sense that they were not really prepared for it, and and that that surprises me some. But I I, I often wonder why is it that an administration is in government for five years, but people are issued contracts for 15, 10 and 15. For me, no government agency or worker should have a contract past the term, a five-year term, because the government has five years. True. So why would an SLP government in power... So the system is all messed of course up as a result up. of it. But then it could be fixed. You just have, The legislation has to be passed you know, to... Uh, it's, it's, Five-year contract to everybody because a yeah. government, a government to me is five years. Yeah. Why would you issue a contract for a PS or whoever yeah. for ten? Yeah. Because you don't even have any guarantee that your government will remain in power. And this is the problem this well, administration is going through right and, now. And, and the thing is, too, you mentioned PS, and and I think sadly, and I remember once talking to Sir John, and he said something to me which I've never forgotten. He said to me, Dave, there are two agencies of government that you should never tamper with. Right. The first is the civil service. Okay. The second, the police. Yeah, you shouldn't mess with these people. You should not politicize, yeah, sure. you keep, you stay away from politics. Mm -hmm. And um, the career public servants, um, we all know what happened many years ago. Um, when um, the new government came in, and you had people who were just you were being, moved. you know, just being moved yeah. and, 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 and talk and of affirmative action and it's, all it's, that kind it's, of stuff. It's yeah. it's not good for the no. public service. No. It's it's something which which should not have happened. How this government reconciles and, and tries to change the direction of this is another matter. But you know, you should rely on your career public servant. You That's do not guy. want to politicize the public service. It should be resisted at all times. Mm -hmm. should not be tolerated. should mm -hmm. not be encouraged. And the same for the police. I was very heartened when I heard the former police commissioner yeah, at a conference um, yeah, today, yesterday, Francois, today. yesterday. Mm -hmm. and he was talking about that yep, yep. almost as if yep. He's, he's probably an expert, you yeah, know, an yeah, expert yeah, on on what yeah, you know yeah, what he's been mind. through, you know. Very, very interesting. Yeah, but you see, politician, the the the, polit the parliamentarian in government becomes God Almighty overnight. The next day, there are few government agencies that becomes God Almighty. <laughs> the next day, of ensuing office, police officers are like that. We have a whole. Lot, they have customs officials who are like that. They speak to you. In a tone of hush. Oh my god. Authority. Oh my god. I'm in charge. <laughs> one guy pulled me over one time and I have all my documents in place. License, registration, my tires are okay. Pull me over. I mean I'm a abiding law abiding citizen. Pull me over. Drive. Uh, license and insurance. He shouts no, at you. Of course, no, excuse me. We are, I'm not saying the man has to kiss me. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? But you say we are conducting a traffic search. I would like to see your driver's license. Driver's insurance. So you kind of jump, you know? You have to hand it in. I mean, the guys become so powerful overnight. And I mean, we, did, we, are the city, we are citizens of, the country, of this country. We have to work with each other. We have but this is very things. much, in my view, it's not just customs and police officers. It's a it's a very St. Lucian thing I think now. So. Yeah, all of a sudden. Very, very St. Lucian thing. I'm not sure where, how that started, where it started. In fact, um, I was talking to Sam Flood last week on this program, and I, I asked him, "What is the most embarrassing situation that yeah. he has ever faced?" And um, he collected his thoughts and said to me, um, um, sometimes when he goes walking down the street, people just jiwe him. 
yeah, call him names and so on. I said, but why would they do that? And then he said, well, because I expose a lot of things on the air, you know, like, um, you know, this father is, is meddling yeah. with his mm -hmm. daughter mm -hmm. and he might just get a little soupcion. Mm -hmm. That's right. So he goes so on he the air and he mm -hmm. says it um, or not necessarily gives the whole story, but just gives a yeah, hint. A hint. And he says when he encounters the guy, mm -hmm. or in some cases the woman, yeah. as the case may be, yeah. they would meet him and curse him up pretty badly and, 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 and yell at him and so on. So he, he confronts, he has that problem. And, yeah. and, but I, I find in St. Lucia, and it's something that I have said time and time again, especially small tradespeople, mm -hmm. I find that there is a sense that um, they're doing you a favor. It doesn't matter if it's a restaurant, it's a bar, it's a bakery, it's a small supermarket, it's a rum shop. There's this sense like when you go there, I'll give you an example of something which happened. And, and I, in fact, I, I went to this, um, and I'll probably ask you, or maybe I'll tell you what, let's take our first okay. break. Let's take our first break. And when we come back, I want to put a question right. to you and I'll give you, I'll probably give you a, a very experience. interesting story. All right. You are viewing Mr. Chairman. I'm David Samuel. Check your approved rubber hose regularly for cracks and change it every two years. Check the hose clips to ensure that they are in good working condition, properly fastened and secured. Residents are evacuated. Fire control wait 20 minutes. At Casabella, we know how to split in the middle and we're doing it this year with a store-wide sale of 40 to 50 50% off. Choose from a wide selection of comforters and bed sheets. 50% off. Kitchen mats. 50% off. Towels and stainless steel pots and pans. 40% off. And the best quality rugs you'll find in stores at 50% off. It's the craziest pre-Christmas sale that you've been waiting for. Shop now and save 40 to 50% off on all your favorite housewares. Offer ends till stocks last. Casa Bella, a store created with you in mind. Exclusive at Baywalk. Sale starts Thursday, October 26th. This Christmas will be your best ever with fixed hassle-free 24-hour approval of loans at relatively low interest rates. Get your new furniture and appliances, quick home repairs and gift purchases. All customers who participate in our Christmas promo qualify for a chance to win in our year-end draw. First prize, one core i5 laptop with all the bells and whistles. Second prize, one core i3 laptop. And third prize, one iPad. Call or visit us at number 15 Bridge Street, Castries, telephone 4 458-8700 or Providence Commercial Building, Rodney Bay, telephone 458-8740. Offer ends December 31st. Fix, a company you can trust. Mango plus clothing plus sale equals what? Answer, 50% off. Shop at Mango and save up to 50% off. Ladies, casual tops were $30, now $15. Working tops, long and short sleeves, ladies jeans, working skirts, and more. Remember, it's all going at 50% off and more. For the men, plaid shorts were $45, now $22.50. Men's hoodies, three-quarter jeans, long skinny jeans, and plaid shirts were $35, now $17.50. It's all going down at Mango Sportswear on Miku Street, Cast Trees. 50% off and more now until stocks last. chocolates and joy why haven't you thrown these things yet relax mommy we're taking these things to Joakali. Joakali, the tent outside massey stores at shock you have to bring all your plastic and glass containers make sure you wash them clean and they sanitize they will win them and you get it points from massey mm. but, but chocolate 
Yay! Yay! That's it! Well, let me help you with this. The Joakali Pop Up Depots will be set up every Saturday from now to November 11th from 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Three convenient Massey stores locations to collect your household glass and plastic items. Prison to Kaisa Ashton, pre-commission, Kote Massey. Hello there, welcome back. I'm David Samuels and I'm here with Mr. Felix de Turville, also known as Champagne, who is a red cap at the Huanara International Airport. So before I mention my question, mm -hmm. uh, um, before I bring up, well, maybe I should bring up the question <laughs> yeah. to you. Um, what's the most embarrassing um, thing wow. you've ever encountered? And, and it could be political or, or whatever, personal, at the Hiwanari, apart from the 17 buckets you, yeah. you you told me about. What's the most embarrassing thing? You see, Dave, I've always tried to live my life a very jovial person. I've never get in, into any major confrontation with anybody. Mm. But because I've gotten myself involved with the politics, you know, a few decades back, it has been very, it gets more intense Intent. every every time. Mm. It gets more intense. Do you get heckled? And, uh, of you? course, no, that's the one I think so, that would be so the most So Labour Party one. operatives, they heckled you a lot? Or? Just after the election. Mm. I went to an establishment in Bexon. That's a place on a Thursday night where they sell, um, you know, sows. And in Bexon? Uh, in Bexon. I think mm. it's called Like It Bar. Mm. I think that happened um, last year, September, just after the election, a couple of months. And there were two guys sitting on the back of a pickup truck. And as I went in, one guy said, you know they pay me to shoot you? A guy actually, a guy said, actually that. said they pay me to shoot you. I say, well. And, they, and then what was your response? I said, I said I, I, I've heard that before, my brother. But I'm also saying to you, when I'm on a political platform, or I call a radio station, or I call a television station, I never try, I never, never say anything that is a lie on anybody. I come to the issues, I say what is supposed to be said, I do not say false stuff on anybody. So if anybody pay you to shoot me, I guess that's the way I have to go. But I also said, you're not the only one with an index finger. He said, man, we're just joking, man, champion, we're just joking, man. But I didn't take it as a joke. I never even made a report. I didn't have never made a report to the police or anything. That was a, a, it's not that, you see, I've heard little hints in that regard. People always say stuff, people call me names because I had um, the political leader, Alan Chastney, on my vehicle from 2014. And it, I had a right in, in the front and, and the back of my car, it says, Alan Chastney, St. Lucia's next prime minister. And I got a heckle and people cursed me and all kinds of stuff. They call me slave. All <laughs> Listen to me. Let me tell you something. In all my years of going around in political, <laughs> trust me, this, this last time was the worst. People call me slave. A guy met me at the top of Carly. He was doing some weed cuts and some bush was said, Alan was your master. Oh my God, he called me Uncle <laughs> Tom. Guys call me slave. You're your slave. You're your slave. Guy got into a little argument with me on the top of Carly, top of BZ. And that one was very heated up. I said, my brother, you choose not to get involved in politics. We all do something that we like. You probably might be smoking. I don't smoke. So if I choose to get involved with politics, there's nothing wrong with that. And the boy, the man went off on me and tell me, you could never see Alan being a prime minister and Alan have to kick you. And oh. Let me tell you something, brother Dave. That, this last election, I mean, I've been around a little bit. This one was the worst. So the two guys sat there. One was doing all the talking. The other one just sat there. Said, they pay me to shoot you. Yeah. Could you imagine a guy at me saying that? They pay me, they pay me to shoot you. Just because I'm on the radio, television, calling these programs and, you know, going on political platform. Did you ever think it was going to become like that so intense? Because we, 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 we were never like that. We were not like that. But I'll tell you what, because we of the like power, that. some of the politicians, they love that power. And they, they have no way to handle it when they're out of office. They cannot handle it. These guys would like to be seen. They walk into a room. And everybody at the time has to say, Mr. Prime Minister or Mr. Minister. They have that expectation from the people. And then the other things it comes with, the, the, the perks, the, the, the VIP, the, the, the diplomacy. Traveling. Traveling. The, the, let me tell you something. Mm. And I've, the ex-Prime Minister, you think when he went out of saying, I'm, well, I'm no longer the political leader of the SLP, that's just talk for one night. 
they cannot live without it and, and better day these guys they have tasted blood you see when just like when a lion goes after the, uh, a gazelle or there and the sink its teeth into the, 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 the gazelle's fruit and it tastes so, so, that so, blood so it's like a poison it's like oh an my addiction god, my god i heard someone was telling me this it. morning it is worse than alcohol or cocaine they or marijuana do without addiction it. they cannot do without it can do without it. Friend That's of mine told me Sir John and, and I'm saying that now because one time a guy had me to believe that Sir John's re entering into politics back in two thousand and four after he had resigned. Mm. I said, But uh, all the people who are asking Sir John to come back, he said, No champagne. Sir John came back, yes, some of the people were asking him, but he came back because of what he had been. No. He has been a politician all his life. I don't life. agree. So I said, no. I, I said, we were agree. begging Sir John to come back. Precisely. Sir John, I Sir don't. John had given up on that Sir thing. Sir John had given up. Sir so John had given he up. He said, boy, champagne. I believe, I believe I know one of the reasons why Sir John came back. Because I, I did an interview with him in 2004 as part of the 25th anniversary of St. Lucia's Independence. I had interviewed all the Prime Ministers. Right. They were all alive then. Mm -hmm. Even um, Alan Weezy and, right. and Winston Snag, they were alive at the time. And I remember in his office he was considering returning because people were at him. Everybody was asking him. Uh, everybody thought um, the flambeau was finished. Mm -hmm. Remember, the alliance had, yep. had broken up. That's right. And uh, a lot of people were after Sir John to come back. And I remember him saying something to me. It went like this. Oh, he has looked at what he has built over the years, and it seems been, like the way he put it, it's been they are trying to destroy I remember, I remember his, his, his legacy I remember that. and trying to airbrush him mm -hmm. out I of history. I right. never forgot that. Mm -hmm. I thought that was the way he coined it, mm -hmm. was so beautiful. Yeah. They are trying to airbrush me out no, of history, no. Dave. And so. I need to come back yeah. and um, my party needs me if I don't do it now we may be in the wilderness and he also said something he said there are a lot of people who supported his party who were being badly treated yep. by the Bad administration yeah. at the time oh, yeah. and there he was he couldn't do anything for them. He couldn't help them. Help them and them. consequently, all of that motivated him to come out. Let me say something to you. And, and you know, some people might not want to believe this. The former prime minister, and you know, in 1997, in 1997, leading up to the general elections, our president at the time, he is no longer with us. He's not dead, but he got ill. And during the campaign, from a prime minister and his entourage, they went into the guy's yard and he ran them out because he said, I'm not with y'all, I'm not labor, and I'm not labor. You wouldn't believe that. The Labour Party won in 1997. One week later, I was not at the airport then, but that's the story. The guys are saying that almost every time. They conducted a trolley. The, our guys, we in the back of the customs and we get the bags coming out after customs is filled with the passenger. The Prime Minister was on board, came down to the airport and asked every passenger they were conducting something to sabotage the Red Caps Association. Listen to that. Listen. Ask every passenger to use the cuts and go outside with their bags. Every passenger. So one guy... The, the our Prime Minister? That, my brother listen, was involved in that to me. our president today had slp scarred in his head with from his barber because he was an slp then he drove he drove an old white pajero the former prime minister used to have at the time when the slp won in 1997 that same gentleman our president today jumped off a building he was so jubilant so happy almost lost his life so that same guy with the SLP still printed in his head said, but Sir John spent all that time and, and, and that was never happened. The former prime minister said to him, chief, 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 you better watch your mouth. Go, go and rest on the wall. Chief, 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 
You better watch him up and SLP is still marked out in his head. I'll give you another incident regarding the same Prime Minister. You know, I'm a person that speaks my mind and, you know, I'm, I, I, like I said, I don't say tales on people. I speak the truth. I say things that I've never tried to upset anybody with the truth. If they get upset, it's up to them. In 2012, after the SLP had won the election, our association would form it. After that 1997 incident, the Red Caps formed the Red Caps Association. That means we are in charge of our own affairs. 2012, the former Prime Minister came back into office. He's sending a guy to the airport manager. Now, there's a protocol regarding to be, before you be, become a sky cop. You have to have a background check. You have to have a training, some form of training, because you can't just come from anywhere and just meet any kind of any tourists and just speak your mind and just say anything. So I'm going upstairs to the airport manager's office along with the president, and the airport manager has a letter, and he's, it's written to the president. As of today, this gentleman, John John, I just said so John John, is starting Operation Fourth Week. That letter is going from the Prime Minister's office. Guy sitting right there in the uniform already. Sitting right there. No involvement with the association. No acknowledgement, nothing. Just send a guy in, send two guys in, and just start work. In an association. So when I tell you this authority, these people have, they can't really do without it. They, it's amazing. They have that power. Can't so it. the people who follow them are really fools. So you could say most that. of the people who they've follow them influenced. are fools. They they they've been badly influenced. They've been um, indoctrinated. Very much so. Very much so. And they love these people. They see them as gods. They see them as gods. Down in Beaufort, you know the area called Bruceville, Shanty Town. That area is, is a disaster waiting to happen, God forbid, because I'm not praying for anything bad to happen to anybody. But I'm telling you, the way this place is constructed, the way it is, if you have any fire, you have any major hurricane, you have any sea swells, these people are going to be in problems. I've never, Big problems. I've never Big problems. trusted politicians. I have always given them the respect due to them. Sure, as human beings. And, um, but I've never trusted them. Um, I, I had, I've had my issues with, with both political parties. Mm -hmm. um, I remember um, I was a very good friend of George Ordlam. And, and who wasn't, who didn't of love course. George Ordlam? Um, his oratory and mobilizational ability. I mean, there is no one in St. Lucia up to this day who comes close. And I remember um, the level of victimization just because I followed George for a while. Um, that doesn't mean to say that I approved of everything George did. Right. Because I was very open, very, I, very outspoken. Um, I, I, I speak my mind. And uh, the things that I've said to many politicians, I know sometimes they don't like what. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you're supposed to keep quiet, yeah. shut up, yeah. and listen, and, that's and, do, the, and, and do, they yeah. do their bidding. And that's the problem I'm going You know, I, I have life. that problem. I'm going for that problem. And I remember um, being victimized. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. there were people like Romanus mm -hmm. and, and others you can't who, speak who wouldn't talk to me for for for, for a year or two because of yeah, george yeah. you're too close mm -hmm. to george and so on you cannot speak and um it's very sad and you know it's six of one half dozen of the other <laughs> that's true it's it's very yeah. very sad mm -hmm. and and um you know it's it's as if these guys they do not learn yeah. you know um a party is rejected a government is rejected you're supposed to analyze the results of the election, and um, you're supposed to be humble. That's right. And um, we've had so many songs, so many calypsos being composed about about, about politicians about every year. Um, I mean, who who was it who had this 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 song? You know, you don't go and get me voter again. Um, what's her name? Um, the the, the lady. Yeah, um, Lynn. Not not Lynn. Um, <clears throat> Black but, Pearl. There's the so man. many songs about <clears throat> politicians. The guys take everything for granted. They, they, just, they, believe. they just do not yeah, they don't get understand. it. They don't get it. They don't, they don't stay humble and, and grounded. Mm -hmm. 
I, it, it's you know? so amazing. And they, they act like they're going to be there forever. All the time. That is the problem. That's the problem I'm having. That's the problem. And they're I'm not having. going to be. It's not, it, it could never happen. It's so amazing when I hear the, the, the member for Castries East talk about victimization. Sometimes I have to really laugh. I could not walk at the airport if a Labour Party operative don't come to me and say, we will take you out from there. Kenny will move you. We'll make Mr. Pierre fire you from the airport. Me. Wow. Wow. Every day. Wow. Wow. Imagine every day that. will move you from the airport. The airport. I've been around the airport from 1979 before any of these guys were even thinking of politics. Wow. But because wow. they have become so authoritative, so yeah. powerful, mm. they have that right to just come into the airport because Champagne is supporting the United Workers Party to just get him out of the airport. Just move him. Nothing but that. That's how these guys think. Mm. Trust me. And I'm just one incident. Just one. I could there are imagine. thousands. I could imagine. Thousands. That's just amazing. It's Absolutely amazing. Um, we're talking about DSH. We kind yeah, of straight we, we a bit. Very we, good stuff. We good came stuff. away from our agenda. Good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Good yeah. stuff. It's good to record all that stuff. Yep. Very, yep. very good. So, um, DSH, um, I rather suspect the Prime Minister will, will make a statement yeah. um, um, when he returns about where where is this heading um, but in your opinion there are a lot of people in the Viewfort area who are already looking forward to there are some people but lately you know what a lot of people have been saying especially Flavos United Workers Party supporter they say they would love to see the Prime Minister move the SS and put it somewhere up in the north and leave you for the and, and two other guys addressed the Prime Minister on that one time he came in the Prime Minister said make, no listen to what the Prime Minister said and I was very the, the, the I was very developed. pleased to hear him say that the Prime Minister said, I have an obligation to the people of the South. The people of the South. Provide employment. And he was, uh, right, when, the, when, when the two guys approached him and, and said that to him, he said, no, I have an obligation to move yeah, this but, but country that is not the way, and to make this That's not the way better. decisions are made. Exactly. Because somebody just said, yeah. oh, why don't you put it in the North? And I mean, the Prime Minister understand. is bigger than that. He's not going to accept that on face value. I mean, yeah. somebody walks up to him and, you know, just says that. But the Prime Minister is not going to pay att attention. But like I, like I said, I've been, uh, after work, we hang out a whole lot in Beaufort. I've been down, trust me, you would believe I'm from down that area. Most of the people don't want it. I met two young ladies at the gas station, at the Ruby's gas station. And that's during the time it was very heated on both sides. I say, um, what do you think about the SH? And both of them, I think one must have been maybe 20, 22, the other one. She said, you think I want to stay here and pump gas my whole life? I said, but pumping gas, somebody has to do it. Because every profession is a human being, it takes a human being to do it. He said, I know that, but I'm looking forward for my future. So I cannot wait. For DSS, maybe I might get something in there. And you, you know the, the people, the, the, the enthusiastic about it. Everybody wants to, that big change. There's nothing down there in the um, Brother Dave. Nothing. Nothing in the South. No. Brother Dave, you go so down to... You know, who, people have, a lot of people have said that to me. The South is dead. There is no, very little commercial activity. I will give you one, one I'll say something to you. There is not one dinner restaurant in before. And that used Not to be a one. place Would you imagine years that? ago. You can go, you can drive imagine from Cassidy's to... You go to the Halcyon days. You remember yes. during this day, there was another one called El Parata. El Parata. El Parata down. Yeah. There is not a dinner restaurant. You, if you pick up a young lady, you say, let's go down in the south and have dinner. You, where, where? There's no way you could go. Wow. Isn't that sad? Very sad. No way you could go. Not a dinner restaurant where you could get a steak. Steak? <laughs> Please. Just wouldn't happen. Yeah, very, very sad. sad. Right. So, um, you are optimistic? Of course. And I you're looking happen. forward to it? I'm looking forward to DSS, <laughs> not just because for myself, for my kids, and my grandkids, which I already have in this country. Listen to me, Dave. A migration, I could foresee a migration from Castries back down to the south. Because you have so many people from down Chauzel, Labri, living, and they're just coming up, and because this is the area where they could try to find a job. If you have that kind of activity going down in the south, all these people would be so happy to go back home. Go back down to the south and work where they're clo much closer to home. People from shows that would be happy to get a job at DHS, DSH, people from library. Let's make it happen. I have no objections to DSH, none at all, mm. none. That stuff about the land and, and land being leased for 100 years and all that kind of stuff, listen to me. It might be stupid of me to say we met lands, we're going to leave land, Land for me is always meant to be developed and used by the people. Yeah. That's how I see it. I concur. 
and uh, there was um, a press release today concerning um, some hotel development in Canada. Oh, yeah, Canada, I know about that and, one. And uh, I know that um, some areas in the south mm -hmm. have been um, identified yeah. as mm -hmm. um, tourism, touristic development. Yeah, uh -huh. And that uh, that augurs well for the, the people of Sufra oh, in yeah. the south. Of course, I, I know about that one. That one, as a matter of fact, when I first heard of that one, I thought it was going to be, it was supposed to be already on stream. But I think the gentleman, the, the owner of that resort, I think he went down to Suriname and I think he had some, he got ill. And now he made a really, a, a, you know, very remarkable recovery. So I think he's back now. So that is going to happen. That, that's a big, a big development. Yeah, 200 and development. something. That's a um, big development. Acres. That's a big development. Yeah, huge. This one is big. And it's a new, um, a new tour. Well, they, they don't have any investments in St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. They have some, in, they have investments in Mexico, and in I think Jamaica and somewhere in South America. Um, so St. Lucia is a, is a new destination yeah, yeah, for, them, for them, you know. Yeah. And what that does in the whole context of uh, of, of of seats, right. um, you know. I heard someone on Sam Flood's program tonight, which was kind of shocked me. And in my view, the the government needs to do some work in explaining the tourism policy. Mm -hmm. I heard someone um, remarking, Isam Nuka Manje Tories, Tout Bagay say Tories, 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 Well, last time Tout Sa, you know? And, um, uh, and this is, to some people, that is, that is a concern. Um, and I think that the government has its work cut out for it. Mm. You know. They really it. have to explain yeah, what, about. Um, what, why is the focus on so many hotels. And the person who was speaking this evening was a bit erroneous because they were saying nothing is happening to agriculture. Mm -hmm. When you heard the Minister of Agriculture just last week talk about um, markets expanding yeah, mm -hmm. and in France and, and so France, on. Exactly. And so I, I thought it was a bit unfair, a very and, unfair. And, and not, not very, balanced, very you know, very and, 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 and brought up the whole issue of the hospitals, of St. Jude and so on. So Isam Nuka, Manje, Manje, tourists, a tourist, 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 a shy tourist, woi, woi, you know, that's But on the other breath, if you, if you, that same individual, I would really like to ask him just one question. Okay. Let's just assume you take off the tourism industry from St. Lucia. We take it off. What else do you have to rely on? No one could answer that question in the better day. None. The little agriculture we have, how much exportation do we do? The, the, the bananas, that's it. Well, we have and we're change. only now so trying to get, because, the, the, listen to me, you have to really kudos to the, the Minister of Agriculture for getting that at the market in France. Yeah, you know? I, I do agree. Um, but I think there's a fundamental problem. There's a fundamental flaw mm -hmm. and that goes back to wow 25 30 years ago mm -hmm. i have always felt as far back as 1974 1979 when the labor party came into office in 1979 because it was an issue then mm -hmm. that there are a lot of our policy makers who don't really understand tourism they don't understand the importance of it to the economic development the of economic the country. Active, exactly. They don't understand it. And I think that our politicians have not seized the moment. They have not really explained to the, um, to the populace mm -hmm. the importance um, of tourism. Um, development to the country. Yep. It just goes back to my and, point about a, know, few, a few minutes ago when I said that not there's a lot of people that believe that they're not involved with tourism but this is our business this is our this is what brings all the revenue to this country so like you said brother Dave, and i will agree with you the people of uh, the, the 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 minister of tourism or the government by extension needs to explain to the people the values of the tourism industry what it brings to this country how much money the, the, the revenue it, it, it really generates that has to be said you understand? And th look at we just got that um, that that award second in the entire Caribbean, second to what what was it, Bahamas or uh, Bermuda? Second, number two. That is big. 
So when a guy calls a radio station and says, Toothbye, say story, story, story. <laughs> it was very amusing. And you know, I, I listen to, to these comments and sometimes I'm saddened by it. That's what pays the bills. You know, better. That's, it me. saddens me. There's no manufacturers. And, uh, no manufacturing, nothing else. It's tourism and, and the little agriculture. But, we we have, have. but what the government has to do is there are other industries they need to try to get back to basics mm -hmm. and um, try to invest. Um, because the whole tourism thing, they, and you know, it's not our fault. There's a lot of suspicion about the industry up to now. Yeah. People just see it as a Caucasian thing, a right. Caucasian industry, yeah, white, white people, people. White people, yeah. You know? And um, that that brings me to another point. I, I recall many years ago when I used to be at the hotels, um, going to a restaurant, and you know, you, you call up a, a waiter or waitress. And even the very attitude sometimes of our people was, yeah. when they're calling, you know, you snap your finger, hey, hey, hello, yeah, hello. Yeah. And you know the people would come to you, and sometimes very quietly, I'll be just seated and watching yeah, the, the the attitude, the attitude of, of the locals, of my friends yeah. seated yeah. before me yeah. to the person who he is trying to get, get some attention to to order a burger yes, or a drink. Sure. And I remember speaking. I remember. You know how many times I've gone to the bar and apologized. To the waiter or to the, the waitress. waiter or waitress say listen i'm really sorry yeah. um about the way my friend treated you mm -hmm. it's not his fault um just forgive him but i'm very happy just mm -hmm. for my sake you were very nice yeah we are allowed people very disrespectful sometimes and that leads uh, me to the point i wanted to make mm -hmm. and I, I i i went back and i need your advice right some time ago i went to this place to have breakfast. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to mention names. Right. Uh, a sumptuous breakfast. I really enjoyed right. it. Mm. So, um, I had some dental floss in my pocket. Because of late, I, I've noticed the, the food sticks well, a lot. Stick, yeah. I guess, I don't know whether my gums are, re right, are right. receding. I'm not sure. Right. But I, obviously, I've got, to, I've got to see my dentist. That's right. So, at the end of the meal, I, I use a dental floss, a small piece of it, and I, I put it in the plate. I had finished having right. my breakfast. Now, it is not something that I would normally do. I, I would have put away, but I, I didn't know where to put it. I, I couldn't have thrown it no, anywhere. No. So the most natural place to put it was on the table on the plate on the, exactly on the plate because you're finished right so a few minutes later um, the plate was taken and went to the the kitchen and um, somebody yelled uh, whose dental floss is that whose dental floss is that you could hear that from the kitchen yes side. very very loudly I did not respond right away <laughs> um, I got the impression that um, the person must have thought it was somebody else's dental floss. Right. So I owned up and said, um, it's mine. And she said, um, why would you um, put some dental floss in the, in the plate? It's not hygienic. So I said, um, it was not done deliberately. And um, quite frankly, I do not like your tone of voice. Right. If you had an issue with it, you could have mentioned it to me privately, right. quietly. But to make such a scene about something like that, which is to me... It's petty. It's, 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 it's petty. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why it's petty. Um, and I started looking at several scenarios where, um, you know, you go to a restaurant, you have to use a spoon... Yeah. Um, cutlery um, to eat, yes. the spoon, the, the fork, and so on. And when you suck a bone, man, that's where you put it and that is when plate. you suck a bone, you know, that, dry, 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 you put it back on the plate. So all of these <laughs> thoughts are in my mind, and I'm saying, but, so I said, but I said to her, um, 
what do you have soap and, and um, washing yeah. liquid for? It's to, to clean up That's those right. things. Yeah. What is all the fuss what about? The fuss? And just before I left, I gave her a good tongue lashing. Right. I said to her, listen, uh, there's something called customer service. Mm -hmm. And you must not ever chase away your customers. Right. Okay, so um, I apologized if it offended you so much for placing the piece of dental floss in the plate. But by the same token, it did not give you any right yep. to speak to, to like a that. customer yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Customers make business and you need to know how to treat your customers. Not but that. it goes back to that point. Mm -hmm. It goes back to the point I was making earlier. St. Lucian business, especially tradespeople and small restaurant owners, do not know how to treat their customers. No, they they act as though they're doing you a That's service. A favor. A favor. That, that, so when you mention about the police and the customs officers and the way they sound and how harsh mm -hmm. they treat customers, it's wrong. It is wrong. And I'm it telling customers out there, if I'm treated like that, I will let you have yeah, it. Speak I'll give you a tongue lashing. Yeah, it's I'm not speaking. right. Mm -hmm. I've been to restaurants all over the world, man, in New York and California and, and London, and they don't treat you like no. that. They treat you with, I mean, with, I mean, sometimes, I mean, you have to give these people a tip because they're so good. Mm -hmm. Some we have a problem in this country. We, we, we do have a serious we problem. We have a serious yeah. problem and, in and, this country. And, and it, it, it has to do with, with customer service. I do not we believe lack our, that. We, we, we lack, lack, lack that. that. We don't understand big, it. Big, big, big time. I think big people time. act as though, um, oh, you must come to me. To. You, you must Rob, come to me. Remember Robbie made a song in that regard? Robbie made that song about Elijah Mouma Vindip and say, and, and uh, you say, Madam, that you just point out. Uh, I can't remember that one. I can't remember that one. We have a huge customer service problem. Mm, serious. A lot, a lot of and you would, to be you, would, you would understand mm, that because course, by virtue because of, of the of my nature, yes. of my, of my And I do as a hotel guy mm -hmm. for 12 years, mm -hmm. 13 years, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, there's a, see, and, and you see, it goes back to tourism. So it's all well and good for the government to open up all these hotels. Yeah, but, but all of the people the need to be trained. What about the training? And they need to understand <clears throat> what what's training? involved in the industry. And I'll say something, when, uh, and, and something that has to do with the tourist board. We used to have a workshop, <coughs> excuse me, almost every year, or twice a year. But for the last five to ten years, it has not happened. Hmm. The tourist board would come down to the airport and have a workshop with the Red Caps customer service, how to talk to the passengers if somebody said they don't have any money don't go off on that person, just say have a good day, enjoy your vacation and this is where we learn that, I've been to so many of those seminars and those workshops so many of them but we have not had one in 5 or 10 years I want to ask you a question if you were, if the roles were reversed mm -hmm. and you had gone to this restaurant and, and you mm -hmm. treated that way, what would be your reaction? Let me tell you something, Dave. I'm a very outspoken kind of guy. Very outspoken. And I do not let people... Was my, was my no, approach not, right, no, right? Of course. You are, but, but you made a valid point in, the, in, in regards to if you suck a bone, it has to go back <laughs> on the plate. Now, that piece of dental floss came from your mouth. Yes. But the bone also comes from your mouth. Yes. So you put the two on the same plate. Precisely. Now, the issue she is having is because probably that dental floss did come from the kitchen. So <laughs> why is it coming <laughs> Why is it coming back to the kitchen? Maybe that's the issue she's having. Wow. I saw absolutely I see absolutely nothing wrong with that. I was shocked. Nothing. I was shocked. But we have so much more to discuss. Yes. yes. Um <laughs> let's have our second and final break and we need to open the lines. I I, I, I suspect there are some people who probably want to ask you a question or two. You are viewing Mr. Chairman, I'm David Samuels, and I'm here with my good friend, and of course you know him, his name is Felix de Turville, Champagne. Stay tuned.
Casabella, we know how to split in the middle, and we're doing it this year with a store-wide sale of 40 to 50% off. Choose from a wide selection of comforters and bed sheets, 50% off. Kitchen mats, 50% off. Towels and stainless steel pots and pans, 40% off. And the best quality rugs you'll find in stores at 50% off. It's the craziest pre-Christmas sale that you've been waiting for. Shop now and save 40 to 50% off on all your favorite housewares. Offer ends till stocks last. Casa Bella, a store created with you in mind. Exclusively at Baywalk. Sale this Christmas will be your best ever with fixed hassle-free 24-hour approval of loans at relatively low interest rates. Get your new furniture and appliances, quick home repairs and gift purchases. All customers who participate in our Christmas promo qualify for a chance to win in our year-end draw. First prize, one core i5 laptop with all the bells and whistles. Second prize, one core i3 laptop. And third prize, one iPad. Call or visit us at number 15 Bridge Street Castries, telephone 4 or Providence Commercial Building, Brodney Bay, telephone 458-8740. Offer ends December 31st. Fix, a company you can trust. Mango plus clothing plus sale equals what? Answer, 50% off. Shop at Mango and save up to 50% off. Ladies, casual tops were $30, now $15. Working tops, long and short sleeves, ladies jeans, working skirts, and more. Remember, it's all going at 50% off and more. For the men, plaid shorts were $45, now $22.50. Men's hoodies, recorded jeans, long skinny jeans, and plaid shirts were $35. $35 now $17.50. It's all going down at Mango Sportswear on Miku Street Cast Trees. 50% off and more now until stocks last. Why is the e-fuel card becoming so popular? The e-fuel card is becoming very popular because it's the cheapest way of buying fuel. Users of the e-fuel card at this Ruby station on Lance Road and the Salt Service Station on Manual Street will get back 30 cents on every gallon of fuel purchase and that can be used towards any subsequent purchase of fuel. How do you get money on the card? It's as simple as using your card to purchase fuel. You hand over the amount of money you desire to put on the card and the card to the cashier and the card is topped up accordingly. All of this happens in a matter of seconds. The fuel card can only be used for the purchase of fuel. Initially the cards are given for free. However, any replacement of the card will cost the consumer $20. The e-fuel card can be obtained at the Aruba service station on Lance Road, the Salt service station on Manuel Street, the Uranora service station in Viewfort, and Jamari and Sons offices on Lance Road. Remember you should not use an open flame, match or lighter to check for gas leaks. In case of a leak, don't light matches, lighters, or stoves. Hello there, welcome back. I'm David Samuels, and I'm here with champagne. Well, not the the drinking. Not the drink one. Not the drink one. <laughs> Not the drink one. <laughs> the lines are opened. Um, we've been already chatting um, quite a lot, and we will open the lines and give you uh, the opportunity to, to chat with us. Um, please um, don't hesitate to do so. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the flow, the mm -hmm. flow situation. Yeah. Um, there have been a lot of people are complaining in the country mm -hmm. that because of the black box yeah, that, that is now part yeah. they have been left without their without cable without cable without cable um you oh my god you i had so much encounters with people from mm. my constituency this young lady walked up to me and she said champion what is going on my sons she has two young boys and you know they go to school during the week but on a saturday she puts the television on so they could watch their cartoons and these kids were crying crying she said champion i don't know what to do i said what happened she said she cannot afford the boxes 
but there's no way her son, so they have a television. So people have a big television. Big television in the living room and, and they no, can't see anything. Wow. They can't wow, see anything. Wow. I, I, you, you know, I don't know what the could transition... You, could you hold on? Let's, yeah. let's go to Union Terrace. Hi, Union. Are you there? Hello? Hello, Union. Hello, I can't hear you. I can hear you, though. I can hear you. Okay, good evening, Dave. How are Hi, you? good evening. Thanks for calling. Appreciate it. And good evening, Champagne. Good night, sir. How are you doing? Champ Champagne, where you get that shit from? I want one like that. That same color. <laughs> I don't know how to want for you. <laughs> no, Champagne, I, I really must compliment you on your presentation tonight. Yeah, um, thank you. We talk about uh, view fort, and I go back when in the days of being feel and uh, clouds nests and the days in view fort. But you know, Champagne, when I hear all the controversy over Beaufort and DSH, it reminds me of my late uh, old friend Primrose Bledman. When I came back to St. Lucia, he, he gave me a, a line that I didn't know what it meant at the time. He, he gave me this line which you'll know. It says, um, Ibon Kosa. Uh, apparently, there's a saying in St. Lucia, and I asked him, what it's, does that mean? It's good like that. It's good like that. The thing good. good. When, I, when, oh, I, when I listen to the people who are posing uh, the development of you fought, it reminds me of Primrose Bedman. It seems as though there's some people who are bent on leaving things as they are. Yeah. You know, I heard an argument over the, the different developments that the government wants. And I, it, it just does, it just baffles me because, you know, um, as a disaster man, I saw the destruction of the BVI recently. And by now, you know who's speaking. Right. And I, I see the situation in Dominica that can, things can turn around in a flash. In a and everybody's looking for development for themselves. And um, I don't know what is wrong with our people. But I, I want to compliment you and uh, for, for being on the show because it's people like you, as a as a a, a, a bell cap, what's the right term? Yeah, sky cap. Yeah, red cap, sky yeah. sky cap in mm -hmm. Fort. You would understand on the ground what's going on. You see it and you hear it every day. So I, I want to compliment you now, Dave. I I want to take a little more time to give you a little story because I believe that lady in that restaurant was lucky. It was once a restaurant I was running, <laughs> and one of the, the, the customers who came into that restaurant apparently uh, wanted to chew on his bone or suck his bone, and he took off his false teeth and put it on the plate, <laughs> and, and, forgot, and forgot the false teeth on the plate and sent <laughs> it back to the kitchen. <laughs> So then he came to the he came to the bar the, the the kitchen and he said quietly, "Have you seen some false teeth anywhere?" <laughs> 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 you know, if, but you know, it's a serious note. You should have tell the lady that they they normally toothpicks on the yeah, table. Exactly. In, in restaurants. In, in fact, I asked. Good I, I did ask. That's a good one. Yeah. I asked. So, so I, I hope I hope next time you don't have to put your false teeth. Well, you don't. Know, well, listen, I don't have false teeth. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it would have been very interesting if I had and I had put <laughs> oh, it on the plate. That would have been trouble. <laughs> but well, before you leave, mm -hmm. let me ask you in, in on a serious note. When you look at the areas of St. Lucia, uh, places like Shantytown and Beaufort and Fuashou and um, Barron's Drive, you as, as, as a man that has always been out there in, in disastrous areas, like you, you were just in the BVI and you saw the, um, <clears throat> how the, the hurricanes leveled these countries, what would you say to, to the people that are living out in these areas of St. Lucia in, in, in case we have a, a Category 4 or 5 hurricane? You know, it, it's sad, Champagne, because, you know, I mean, St. Lucia is lucky. St. Lucia is very lucky. I wouldn't say Saint God loves St. Lucia, you know, because I met a priest. I interviewed a priest in the BVI in Virgin Gorda uh, when nine out of the ten churches up there were totally destroyed. Um, we, are, we are just lucky. It has nothing to do with God. It's nature. But, you know, the point is that it's sad when a government 
regardless of which government it is, is trying to do something for the, the average person. Because there are a lot of the people that you see kicking dust, the opposition members and the people who have their jobs, their, whether they're legal pro profession, uh, their, their legal professions and so on, that they can get out of politics and go into private practice and do this and do that. Are they really thinking of the people who do not have any qualifications looking to be trained into some kind of skill in, in, in St. Lucia? We, we have so much to be grateful for. Yeah. And these people are just playing share politics. I know it's on both sides of the mm -hmm. fence. Let me just say this because I, I, I want to sound balanced in a sense, but you know where, where my heart is. But we have to understand that St. Lucia cannot remain like that. No. They laughed at John Compton when he thought of Rodney Bay with all the mosquitoes. They criticized the tunnel. They will do everything. Um, but right now, after spending so many years in the political arena, Dr. Kenny Anthony should be the last person. And his sidekick, Philip J. Pierre, should be really trying to support the government. I remember in Canada, there was a, there was a politician called uh, uh, Pierre Trudeau, and he was criticized with everything that, uh, that he tried to do for Canada by a gentleman called Robert Stanfield. And I, when I think of Philip J. Pierre now, I know in my heart, and I feel in my heart, that Philip J. Pierre could never become Prime Minister in Lucha. He was acting... Philip, uh, the, the Prime Minister, ref refused to step down after promising two terms and give Philip J. Pierre a chance. And now he's in opposition. He is falling in the same trap. And he'll fall in the same trap as Ro Robert Stanfield of Canada. You can check it out. Would never replace Pierre Elliott Trudeau as Prime Minister. Okay. He let a, he let a fellow called Maroney come in. Yeah, we got to go, um, Lano. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Nice right. to meet you. Thank you very Thank much you. for calling. And uh, the lines are still open. We're talking about flow. And, yeah. and so you have a situation yeah, where... Not one. Yes. Not one situation. A whole mm. lot of people, <coughs> excuse yeah. me, have been, you know, stop me on the road and say, Champagne, we have no television. So yeah, why the TV are, are, they, are they complaining, though? To me, I've not heard that issue being um, ventilated well, in, apparently on the, the talk the, show. The very people, <laughs> they probably, they, they don't even have my due to, to accommodate a box that they will be. They're not going to call a radio program. You understand? So the people, we do not know what it is, the technical aspect of it. Maybe there's a reason why Flo has it done that way. But why, but, <coughs> why, why aren't they communicating with the people? That is, or two. That is what How I'm could someone <coughs> have TVs at their There's, home and, and, it just, and, and they, they, the they viewing, can't the tune to anything? The taken away from them. That's really ridiculous. And you just leave them yeah, there just, for weeks? That there does not weeks. make any sense. No, no sense. No television. What, what no, is, what, no, what? no viewing. No, no channel. No nothing. No nothing. He come to you. at my house when they came to my house, they said, "Oh, we changing the whole system. We going digital." Mm -hmm. So I said, "Well, okay." How? Then they said, "You have. We give you one box, and the other two, you have to put. You have to pay for it." Mm -hmm. So then these are the people. That, 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 I'm not saying I'm a rich guy. I wish I was a rich guy, but then you have to have television. The girl said to me, "Champagne, my children, they cannot watch their little cartoons on a Saturday morning. And they're crying." And it's not just that one house. There were hundreds of homes in this country mm. that is going for that problem. Your, your assessment of <coughs> Prime Minister oh, Alan Chastney's my buddy. That's my buddy. Mr. Mr. Let me tell you something. This Prime Minister, he has a passion to move this country forward. Alan Chastney, you hear talk of, oh, he's flying there, he's flying there. Dave, you... you wouldn't know how hectic it is to travel. You have to get rid of this, get rid of that, even if the Prime Minister is a diplomat, but you know, sometimes it's still hectic to travel. This Prime Minister, in my mind, is putting things in place. When he gets started, when he gets started, this country will move so quickly. People will be shocked. I believe in this man. I believe Alan Chastney is going to make St. Lucia, St. Lucia proud. He's going to move this country. I give the Alan Chastner 95 approval rating. 95. As high as that. That's 95. <laughs> I, I would give him the 100, but you know, that will be a little bad. I would give him 95 <laughs> approval rating. This man is on the go. Uh, the Prime Minister came, when he comes to the airport, every time he travels, he comes to Sky Caps. He talks to us, mm. tells us everything that go, that's going on. He said he brought a delegation. Sometime I think he went to England with them. 
and they, they, they were supposed to be out there for eight days. By the fourth day, everybody had backed down. They cannot keep up. Can't keep up, with, can't keep up with this man. This man is on the go. Mm -hmm. it's the Prime Minister said he went to France to two meetings. He called him in Washington the very same day. He had to fly back to Washington. Mm -hmm. So when people are out there thinking Alan Chastney is having a joy ride on aircraft, that's not what it is. This man is trying his best. You know, Sam Flood told me something once. I think um, during the the tenure of the UWP between 2006 mm -hmm. and 2011. Right. I think um, Sam Flood went on yeah, I tour, think he and Isikel a tour to with London. England. Yes, I remember. I remember seeing him going Sam Flood told me <coughs> how tired he was. Oh, yeah. he like Alan was just like some, how do they call the battery? Yeah, the, 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 the bunny. The, yeah, he the, just the, couldn't. Can't Alan. keep up with this guy. Can't keep up. Can't keep up with he Alan. just keeps Alan. going and going move. and going and going. It's on the move. So because of a lot of people know that stuff. Remember there, there was that rumor last time where he collapsed at the UN and all that kind of nonsense. Alan Chastain is a human being, you know. People have to take that into consideration. He will fall sick. If he has to collapse, he will collapse. A lot of people are of the view that Alan Chastain is from heaven and he's an angel. Alan Chastain is not an angel. Alan Chastain is a human being. Well, but this they, man will make this country, this country, the people of this country proud. Yeah. Just remember I said that on that show tonight. The third political party, the rumors of the ah, yeah, well, What yeah, are you hearing? Yeah, Any yeah, truth yeah, in that? Uh, what, I, don't what's know about, I don't know about you, but I'm hearing stuff like hearing, that. I'm hearing, hearing that in the air. Uh, but with my little experience, my few days in the politics. <laughs> uh, let me tell you days. something. My few days. The UWP and the Labour Party, in my op opinion, these are traditional parties. Traditional. The UWP, they, listen to me. During the election, the campaign last year, early, I met two old ladies on the roadside, maybe 75, 80, you'll never believe that, with a little chair, Brother Dave, in their hand. I gave them a ride somewhere between Monrepo and Miku, somewhere in that area, maybe Tiroche Gap. So they said they were going to a meeting in Passions. I said, Okali, oh, she's Passions at the meeting? These people, they are loyal to their party. For you to say, we are going to build a third party in this country, I'm, I'm not saying you might not get a few votes. Brother George was very vocal, very powerful. That's a good, that's a good powerful. example. Powerful. Every a good young example. person at the time. 1982. Uh, a PLP. Powerful. And when the election was called, what happened? Shock. What happened? Compi won 14 seats. Okay. Yep. Now, you could look at look at look at that time and say, oh, we're living in a different time. The young people are yes. different now. They're more yes. into... The, yeah. But I'm still saying to you, a third party, you need to come very, very good in this country. I the agree. third party, you have to come very well. I the agree. names I'm hearing out there, the names I'm hearing out there, just the names I'm hearing, they can survive. <laughs> <laughs> I am telling you that. And those people, if you come in with fresh people, new people with new initiatives, new ideas, new, new, new and put it out there for the young people, especially and, and the young people. youthful people. Youthful people. You see this people, old... People who can um, relate to the to youth. To the young people. Yes. To the young people. These people I'm hearing, let me tell you something, most of them will lose their deposit. Uh, most of those I'm hearing, I'm telling you. Yeah. These people I'm hearing, they can't survive. Yeah. This country... I'm hearing some two, things too. I'm hearing Two some, traditional yeah. parties that... Some of the people that are loyal to their party, they don't even want a contract. They don't want money. They just want to know their party is in power. There are thousands of people like that, better day. I'm telling you, I talk to them all the time. No yeah. here, party, mama, just so John, um, John Compton made a party. No lah, no cast we believe from. I pala ako ebi no men no like party. No, you hear that all the time. You hear that all the time. You could call it stupidity if you want. It's up to you. But the people are loyal to their party. Yeah. And you talking about a food party? Whoever is thinking about it, you all could go ahead. But I'm telling you tonight, they can't survive. Yeah. Cannot survive. I know you wanted to comment about um, the Castries mayor. And oh. the, there was this um, that, that incident with the Castries constituencies council, the mayor. Mm. With the statement with, regarding the police. Yes. Um, oh. Let me tell you something. Your views on that. The mayor never said anything wrong. Never. Mm. You and I, we both grew up in Castries and we still reside in, this, in that area. On any given day. You don't see no police officers. I don't know if there's a, de a, a, a deterrent with the police. All of a sudden, you do not see police officers nowhere in Cashews, but they. I'm not saying that because they will argue that they're plain clothes. Well, if they, they will, so. they will argue that if they're in plain clothes. Well, at least that, that's a good move. <laughs> but I'm telling you, I'm, the Marshall Police Station. 
a few years back, at I, midnight, uh -huh. shut down. I'm hearing the Babano police station at midnight. It's closed. A police station is closed at midnight. So if you have an issue at twelve, at 5 past 12, you, you have to shake a gate for a police officer to open the door. Now I'm seeing the Marshall Police um, Station is open 24 hours. But it used to be closed at midnight. Wow. How could you close a police station at midnight? Yeah. People has issues. The mayor said absolutely in fact, in nothing. Fact, in fact, that's when all the issues that's occur. That's exactly. After midnight. The mayor didn't never said anything that was wrong because what he said mm -hmm. about not seeing police officers on duty in the city during the day, he's right. Mm -hmm. He's not wrong on that. He's right. There was a cruise ship. Well, now the cruise ship season has started. There were cruise ships two days ago, and somebody was doing a little survey, delivery survey. The Holiday Taxi Association were the ones paying the SSU police officers during the day outside La Blas Carinas. And it's in the daytime, on government time. All the taxis paying the police officers. So where are the regular police that are supposed to be on duty to take care of the city? They're not nowhere. So, and the Police Welfare Association came out oh and boy, defending. They were, they were pissed and, off that. Yeah, they, they seem very... Off. They were pissed off. They say it hits you. That's so, another thing, you know. Um, I find um, in St. Lucia today, people do not take criticism. Sometimes... The moment you say something about them... An that, observation. Yes. To come out they come at you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And um, I am not so sure about the situation of the police and how many police... But I drive all the time. And to me, I, I don't really see police on the streets, generally you speaking, them, to be quite you honest. Don't I don't see generally them. see them. You don't. But I'm not saying they're not there. But... I don't think that the mayor would just make a carte blanche statement no. like that if he did not exactly. have solid and reasons solid for thinking for so. That. Exactly. So when the Police Welfare Association comes out and sort of defiantly, mm. it just seems like being defensive. But you I know, tell you what the, the Police Welfare Mr. Chico never said though. He never said that we have police officers assigned in certain areas in the city to defend that statement. He came out and the, and the mayor said, no, this is that, this But he never said ev on, a, on any given day that we, uh, we deploy two police officers on Jeremy Street, we deploy two on, on, on Brazil Street. He never said that. Mm -hmm. To defend what the mayor was saying, he never did that. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now listen to me. I, I love the police. Without the police, you, you don't have a country. I love the police. But I'm saying what the mayor said, he's not wrong. He's not wrong about it. We both grew up in the city. We still live in the city. Exactly. I drive the city throughout the roads of the city every day. You don't see anybody. When an incident happened on Chaussee Road, you see the guys come out there for a week, and after that, the, the situation dies down. Everybody goes home. There's no nobody there. Do you think that the fact that um, you now have um, city police, police, oh yeah, may have given the uh, Royal St. Lucia yeah. Police yeah. force a, a feeling a that break. oh well, maybe we don't really have we to go into the we city don't have anymore. To be there because these maybe guys that is what is really going be, on. That might be what's going on. Any closing thoughts? Be. But it, but it I mean, time has is yeah, just we, amazing. We, I could stay here for another chat, hour talking we, to we you. We chat so much that yeah. we, 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 we diverted too much. Yeah, we. <laughs> the size all the time. Yeah. But I need to talk about Cassius East. Mm -hmm. And um, that's my constituency. That's where I grew up. And I'm still there as a matter of fact. I mean, fact. it is Philip Pierre's constituency. No, it's not. You, 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 you said it's your constituency. No, it's constituency. I am putting it to you. No, it's not Philip It no. is Philip J. Pierre's constituency. <coughs> no, it has never been Philip J. Pierre's constituency. Something that's yours, you take care of it. Right? If something belongs to you, you should cherish it and take care of it. I'll give you a scenario. On every given school day, in Castries East, there are over 100 children that don't go to school. They do not go to school. You're saying to me something was never, you never put something in place to make sure those kids go to school. Look at the houses. Every, for four decades, I've been here in the George Charles Boulevard. We're going to have a development there for the people. When it rains, the river comes right in there, takes all the people's furniture, those that's on the edge of the river. Nothing has been done. Four decades. My mom, God bless her soul. I don't know my mother because she died when I was two years old. My last brother was a few months. She was a, a street vendor right on the side of opposite Brantford. You know Brantford, the pavement right there. My mom had all of uh, all of her four boys. She used to sell little peanuts. That's what the older people told me: peanuts, charcoal, little stuff to help her four boys. And every time I say, I get a little emotional. You would be, would you believe that 53 years later, which is my age, a lot of people seem afraid to say their age. I feel good about my age. I thank God for keeping me every day. 53 years later, 
the martial road, martial area, the same. It has not changed. 53 years later, Marsha, Main Street, Marsha, the last time it was paved was 1987, in the 1987 election. 1987. That's 30 years this year. So, if something is yours, you have not, 30 years, the road has not been paved. Boulevard, same thing. Marsha Gongs, Philip Pierre came on, 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 on in 2012. I remember listening to that speech on, see, bragging about the Marsha Gongs. We're going to redevelop Marsha Gongs, put light in and the stands. We're going to take care of the Marsha stands. You don't want to go there. You don't want to see it. The roof is gone. No toilets. Put a two forehead lights for a little um, sets of lights. Those lights have been, um, well, I don't want to say damaged. But they're not in operation, they're not lighting. It has been almost a year now these lights are not functional. They're not working, none. This is a constituency of this guy has, been, has, has won four times. You know Masha, brother Dave. It's the same, you drive for Masha. I have my last brother, he lives in New York. Every time he comes, he says, he say, Champion, when are you all doing something about Masha? When? And I have, there's nothing you could do. It needs to but, be. But, but people come from outside. And I'll tell you what happened with the, with the politicians. There are certain areas, the people of Marshan, Shantiton, G4, and Byron's Drive, they are only counted on election night. Yeah. That's it. They are only counted on election night. Pay no attention to all the who are people make noise about. I, and I'm not saying I'm going up for election, but I'm just saying so. If I run for cash, it's on win. You could never see this place the same way it is. Never. I have a passion for my constituency. I believe, before, I want to see before God, God closes my eyes, see this place changes. Everybody says, me, I'm not going to master the Abad. But during the daytime, their kids come there and run sports. They come to a burning flame, a burning flame show. They come to a casa. It's the same marshal they told you, I'm not coming there. Marshal is nowhere for somebody to go. But in the nighttime, carnival. You know how many shows the marshal? Nobody, everybody just came in, shows, Football competitions take money, leaves nothing with the, com the, the community and just leave. And have this place in a mess. A total mess, this master place. 400 and something um, households without um, toilet. 400. People have little latrines. 165 people go to the bathroom in bags and throw it in the bush. In Cass Street East. 360 without water. This is not a, a makeup story, you know, brother. Dave. This is a survey that we conducted myself and Mr. Nafanyan Reynolds during the uh, 2014, 2015, when we were trying to when Mr. Nafanyan wanted to run the city. And you saying this is the community? This is my. And you saying this is my town as a parliamentarian? Kabi's town didn't take care of it. Never has. I see kids not going to school. I say, why you not in school? I say, my mommy can send me to school. My mommy tell me stay home. Let me give you a little scenario. In 2014, mm -hmm. I was driving down from work. I, you know, there's a, the, the back road through Trapiton. You come down through um, Bacatel. I saw some kids, about six of them, playing football on the road. No, Bacatel has no, no flat. It's all hills. So I stopped the car. I said, tell your mommy, vote for the United Workers Party. Because I will make sure, I said, me, Champagne, will make sure that we build you all a cot in Bagatelle. You would not believe I'm saying that in Abu's back. All these little kids, one grabbed the ball and they run, yeah, Mr. Champagne said they're going to build us a cot. The people are waiting for stuff. It's all nice for the Prime Minister and whichever government is there to go on a national level to develop the country. But if you do not start from the constituency level, where your bases are, there's no survival. Yeah. No survival. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for the, um, the, the bit of um, history on, on Castries East. Yeah. And let's just say to be continued. We, yeah, will, yeah. we will continue that at some yeah. time. When, when Castries East gets a little year. better, I will make sure I come here, Brother Dave. God, God, God bless us. I will come here and say, Brother Dave, something is happening in yeah. Castries East. But thank you very much. Um, Champagne was really nice. Uh, Felix, the two of us having you. Yeah, yeah. Um, any closing thoughts? Very, very quickly. 30 seconds. Well, I have to say to the people out there, the St. Lucian public, mm. the Prime Minister asked for three years to get this country back on track. I see a lot of sincerity in this wo these words. I believe Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney will try his best to get St. Lucia back on track. And I, I, have, I put it in my heart that he will make it happen in 2018. 
Thank you very much. It was really a pleasure. All the pleasure. You're, you're, you're such a, a great, um, a great. But uh, we didn't even get to say too much. We we diverged so much. <laughs> we went to be so much. But the next time, got a great, a great, um, a great guest, and um, I'm quite sure, folks, that you, you enjoyed it, as well. Champion is really an extraordinary um, interviewee, uh, extraordinary guest. Mm -hmm. So, um, thank you to our one caller. <laughs> I rather suspect. Um, I thought perhaps the red cap guys in view fort would have called, but 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 they didn't. But you know, and, and that's it. And tomorrow and over the weekend, I'll be meeting uh, quite. In fact, interestingly, I met a lot of people over the weekend who said that they were trying to get the lines to to ask um, Jugwa mm. question, and they couldn't. They couldn't. They get couldn't, the they couldn't get yeah, the line. Some sort of story. So it wouldn't surprise me if some people say the same thing. So, well, that's it. Um, this program is going to be rebroadcast on Sunday at the same time, half past eight until close down until 10 and on wednesday morning next week so on behalf of champagne our red cap friend at the huanara international airport mr felix de Turville, this is david samuel speaking mm -hmm. on behalf of bernard fanis upstairs at the controls this meeting is adjourned <laughs>